Alafi and Louisville, one of the greatest kings of older year. He was brave and fearless, a great statesman and determined leader to take back all the lost glories of his kingdom. He emerged at a time when there was a clash of ideals at Oya. The sacredness of the monarchy had been corroded by many provincial governors under the empire. These governors wanted to remain independent of Oya. They wanted Oya to be decentralized and uh, Moluiwu wanted Oya to, to regain its lost glory and take it back to the time when the Alafin reigned supreme in all parts of the empire. The governors of the provinces were responsible for providing him with um, soldiers in campaigns. This was what they used to hold him hostage in the past and this was also what they used to hold his predecessor Alafi Amodo hostage. But this time around, Oluwebu was able to outsmart them because he made friends with the Baribas. The Baribas are the soldiers of Bogu. They have always been friends of Oyo since way back. And um, anytime Oyo needed their help, they're always around to, to help with genuine heart of friendship. Now, these are formidable warriors that have never been defeated in battles. That is the Baribas. When the Shungai Empire took all of the largest parts of West Africa and they were coming down towards the, to the, the, our side of the world, the Baribas were able to stand up to them and defeat them. When the Fulani was also coming from Shokoto, they were able to defeat them as well, twice. In fact, the second battle was so bloody that um, um, Sultan Belo, that's the son of uh, Muslim Nafodio, called them um, devils of a stubborn nature. They helped Oluewu to win a lot of campaigns, but there was a big mistake Oluewu did. After they've been able to defeat Ilori, he should have just gone in and take back Ilori. But rather, he paused a little bit to regroup the army and stays too long before he now decided that it was time to take Ilori. By that time, the news had leaked that after he takes Ilori, he plans to, to deal with many of the provincial governors for the acts of sabotage that they've done in the past to his predecessors and even to him. Because if he had not called in the Baribas to help him, he would have been in trouble himself. Now, among those who he planned to punish was Prince Atiba and um, also Timi of Ede. Timi of Ede was one of the richest governors. In some of the campaigns in that region, he would finance it from his pocket. And um, he, he, he had a lot of revenues coming to him because Ede at that time was a, was a transit city. And he got a lot of money from, from commerce. And then Ede was also had a lot of fertile lands and and a lot of business environment and so he he was a very rich governor. Uh, in the camp, Timmy of Ede came with his soldiers and like many of the governors do when they get to the camp, they will walk to their king and pay homage to him by prostrating and and presenting themselves and letting him know they're around with their soldiers to join the coalition. So immediately he did it and left. Now he was a large guy. He was huge and and big. And so after he left, uh, Elidui, that's the Bariba king, was joking with Alafion Lewu that uh, Timmy was a very large guy, and uh, Moluwebu responded that he had fed fat on revenues that should have been remitted to the capital and will be dealt with after the war. Now, this was supposed to be a joke between two kings, but a few people around is dropped on it and told um, Timmy of Ede. And um, it was clear that the uh, resident governors um, were not comfortable with Oluwewu's stand that after the war that he was going to come for them. And um, when Atiba now called all of them and said, hey, they, they have to make sure that he does not come out of that war alive because if he did, they were going to be in trouble. He assured them that if they could work together to sabotage the war and make sure Oluwewu is disgraced, 
he will not disturb them because he 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 stood a chance to take the throne. So he was planning two coups. One was to ensure that Oluwewu was not victorious in that battle, and the second was to make sure that the warlords support him to be king after him. So they put plans in place uh, to desert the king during the war and open the flanks for the enemy to overrun them. They sent messages to Elorin of their intentions and of course this was great news to the Emir because um, the coalition with the Bariba army was one he couldn't defeat and so the news of sabotage was a great one. Now, rumors of the intention of the sabotage got to the Senate uh, the or your mercy. Uh, Oloiwu was um, a tough man. He was a very difficult person to convince. When he made up his mind about things, nobody could change him. He was very firm in his in his views. So it wasn't easy for them to make him change his mind. They greatly worried about the fate of Oyo if he lost the battle, because uh, they knew the capital was likely to be inv invaded. The Ayomis met and deliberated on this and they sent message to Olewu on the camp to change the battlegrounds from Ogumasha to Iwo. Iwo was further away from the capital and if they lost the battle, there will still be a lot of chances for them to regroup and all that before the invading army came around to plunder their city. Also, Olewu would have a chance of a lot of friendly kingdoms in between that would help him and protect him from an angry army. Oluwewu totally rejected the advice and moved on with his earlier battle plans. They sent another messenger through Elidwe after they got a message from the oracle, that is Ifa, about the, the fate of the battle. Knowing fully well that the Bariba king was the only friend that the Alafim would listen to when others failed to convince him. But even a little way could not make him change his mind. Ogumasha was a shorter route and he was determined to march into Ilori through Ogumasha. He marched the large army towards Ilori in December of 1830. He met at a place called Pakaba Road. Atiba and Timi Bangwe gave way while the battle was going on and they, they broke the ranks and the enemy was able to close in into the battle and kind of subdue the Oyo army. A little way was killed and his head was cut off in anger by the Fulani army for the frustration the Baribas had um, caused them since the days of um, Usman Danfodio. It was the first time the Fulani could boast of victory over any war with the Baribas. Olu Ewu's son, seeing the treachery of the provincial governors, wrote to his father and swore to him that he would die in that battle, that he would fight till he drops dead, and he bid his father farewell, and then escaped into the heart of the battle, and he fought until he was killed. After the defeat of Oyo, uh, the nobility got news of it from the battlefield and just as they have feared the the city was plundered and raised to the ground and and destroyed uh the leader of the people that came in to plunder was lan lucky lan lucky has always disliked Oyo for some reason and has always been friends with um with um the the emir to Lauren. The previous king, that's a mother, did everything to reconcile him back to Oyo and even gave him his daughter. But he, he took the woman and beat her to death. And he was very, very aggressive towards Oyo and he was happy to see them lose in battle and he came in and plundered the cities with his army. Oyo Katunga had to be deserted because the, the plundering was getting very constant. They left their city for good and moved to Igboho and Kishisi. And that was how Oyokatunga came to an end. The glory of that old empire from that capital base ended with Alafion Luiwu.